Hello my loves, welcome back to another video. I'm Ashley and today I'm going to be giving you a bookshelf tour. I have done quite a few bookshelf tours in my time but I think this one will be the biggest yet because I am nearing owning a thousand books and ever since moving into this flat you can really tell because this flat is not big and I think every single surface of this flat has books on it in one way or another. But I did recently have a big shuffle round and so I thought I would take you through my bookshelves and all the different ways that I categorise my books. So what I'm going to do is give you an overview of every bookcase, every bookshelf and then just show you a few books from each that you might find interesting because of the editions or the covers rather than show you every book individually because we would be here for hours if that was the case. So this is the main bulk of my bookshelves. These are the Billy bookcases and I've been saying for years that I don't necessarily love these. I wouldn't really call these my aesthetic. I would love to have huge wooden shelves but they are very expensive so that is a goal for future me and for now these will do. So these are the Billy bookcases from Ikea that a lot of people have. Now what is different about these bookshelves compared to my last bookshelf tour is that I have actually extended them so these are a lot taller than they used to be and it makes for some interesting organisational problems let's say because I can't reach these shelves. <laughs> but I will show you that when we get to it. I do also have a smaller bookcase on the other side of this room. This bookcase just kind of came with the flat so I've put it to good use. And in this room too, I do have a book cart that is also from Ikea. But then when we move into my living room, I do have two more bookcases in there. These ones are a little bit different. So there is one which is built into the wall. And this is actually my favorite bookcase out of all of them. I just really love how it looks. And I do also have some shelves which are more of the ladder type. And these are largely books that I like to display, i.e. my fairy loot book. Books. And then dotted around this room as well there are also books just on every surface. There's some on my coffee table, there's some on the table next to my main bookcase in there. I'm not kidding when I say that there are books everywhere in this flat. <laughs> now I organise my books by genre and that is pretty much the only organisation there is. Quite often I just like to shuffle them around to make sure that they're looking nice. So I typically tend to group together hardbacks and paperbacks so that they're all a similar height. But you'll see what I mean as we go through these. So I am going to start with this bookcase since it is the largest and the main bulk of the collection and I'm actually going to start with the very top shelves because I can't reach them. I don't know how I'm going to film this but I will find a way and I'm going to film all of the top shelves in one go and then I'm going to go down the bookcases as I usually do so let's give it a go. <laughs> so this is what I mean when I say I can't reach my top shelves because if I do this even if I stand on my tiptoes I can just about get those books that you can't even see on camera right now and there are even more on top of that so if I just pan that up a little bit this is what I'm contending with <laughs> I think this is the best I can manage I'm afraid hello for context because I know I'm gonna get asked I'm five foot four and uh, this is this is where I can reach to so we love that so for obvious reasons, I have basically put the books that I don't need to take off my shelves all too often right on the top shelves. So on the very, very top, I've got my ancient classics because I don't find myself reading them all too often. This shelf is my Sarah J Maas shelf and this shelf is my Samantha Shannon shelf. Over here, we have just a few random fantasy books and that is pretty much the extent of what I can show. <laughs> So zooming you in a little bit, you can see that I have a fair few Sarah J Mars books. It's the collector's edition and it is absolutely stunning. I adore it. I really wish that they would come out with the rest of the series in these editions because it has been years since they released this and I am not convinced that they are going to continue, but they really should because it is beautiful. I really don't know what I'm going to do the next time Sarah J Mars releases a book because as you can see, the shelf is very full. And honestly, the same goes for Samantha Shannon over here. I do tend to collect her books, so that's why you can see multiple editions. Samantha Shannon is my favourite author so I just go a bit mad with her books honestly. This isn't even the full extent of it, I do have more books behind these ones <laughs> but I needed to save on shelf space so this is the best I've managed to do. As you can see I do have certain books that are faced the other way. That is literally just because I don't really like the colour scheme of this series. It's very bright, there's lots of yellow and orange it doesn't really go with the vibe of my rooms, so I just turned some of them the other way so that it wasn't quite as bright. <laughs> and then over on this far corner, I do just have a few very random fantasy books. So we've got Jen Williams, Rebecca Ross and James Islington. Okay, so back over to the left-hand shelf and to the shelves that I can actually reach. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> this is 
unintentionally a witchy shelf. <laughs> So the majority of these bookcases are fantasy books and I realised that I had a lot of ones that are related to witchcraft so they just kind of all ended up here. I think the ratio of me reading these is about half and half and there's definitely some favourite books on here. For instance I really love Witches of Ash and Ruin by E. Latimer, this is so underrated and I highly recommend checking it out if you like the Celtic mythology vibe. I also found The Nature of Witches to be a really fun read and this is one which I always feel the need to point out because it has this beautiful hardcover underneath and that's not any particular edition that is just the hardback another book which i love from the shelf is hex by jenny fagan this one is a super tiny novella which is based on the story of gailis duncan who is a woman who was famously tried for witchcraft in scotland there are still a lot of books on the shelf that i really want to read and get to soon because they all just sound so good moving down the shelf we have a fair few epic fantasy books these are all hardbacks and as you can see some of these are missing because there are a couple of series that i will be starting from the shelf in february so we've currently got the shadow of the gods missing and also the blade itself by joe abercrombie so these two you will see later in the video where i keep my tbr books but so far i've only actually read one book from the shelf which is a little bit ridiculous but that book is the Poppy War by R.F. Kong. This one I found kind of middle ground for me. I only rated it about three stars, but I am going to be continuing with the series. This is actually a first edition book, which I managed to find secondhand. I don't know how that happened, but I'm very happy about it. I also want to point out these editions of the first two Witcher books because these are illustrated editions and they are absolutely stunning. Every single piece of artwork within this book is done by a different artist. And The Witcher is a series that I do want to get to eventually. I don't know when, but it is one that has become such a cult classic within fantasy that I do want to get to it at some point. So I figured I would start collecting these beautiful illustrated editions while I was at it. These Joe Abercrombie books are also broken binding editions. So these are quite unsuspecting when you first look at them because they do have the original covers, but they do also have sprayed edges and this absolutely stunning foiling underneath, which I am just obsessed with. So I am a big fan of those and you will see throughout this video that I am a big fan of foiling in general. I have a lot of very pretty books. <laughs> Moving down a shelf, this shelf is slightly more chaotic because this is just full of books that I didn't know where to put. It is also incredibly tightly packed, so this is going to be fun showing you. But the first thing to mention is my Night Circus collection, which I have here. So the Night Circus is one of my all-time favourite books, and I do tend to collect editions of it. I haven't gained a new edition for a long time, but to save on space, I have actually stacked them all behind this one bigger hardback in the front. So this is the Illumicrate edition. I have just taken the dust jacket off because I prefer it without but if I take that out you can see that it's got sprayed edges to match the theme and then behind it we have lots of different editions of the Night Circus just kind of hidden away back there out of the way one of my favorite editions is this white one it has however come into contact with water at some point so the red sprayed paint is leaking onto the cover which is not ideal but it's fine. <laughs> this is also a US first edition, which again, I managed to get secondhand without knowing it was first edition. So I appear to just be lucky in that sense. But for the rest of the shelf, we do just have a few random books. So we've got V. Schwab over here. And then the majority of this is Juliette Merlier. I have a lot of Juliette Merlier books. This entire stack is Juliette Merlier. And then these books here. There are three different series mixed within this stack and the formatting of her books tend to be very random and sporadic. She quite often has these teeny tiny mass market paperbacks but then as you can see some of them are ginormous so the size difference just doesn't really make it too easy to organise but this is what I've managed to come up with and I love Juliet Merlier books at least the ones I've read so far there are still a fair few in this stack that I haven't read yet so they are pending but I love her books for folkloric fantasy definitely recommend them. Moving down a couple more I may as well do these ones together because this entire shelf is Robin Hobb how satisfying is that? It would be more satisfying if I could get these to fit this way, but unfortunately I can't. I have read the majority of these books apart from these three. So the entire realm of the Elderling series I have recently just complete. I do also have this quite strange cloth bound edition of Assassin's Apprentice, which I don't really know what to do with, so it's just kind of there. <laughs> 
And then down here we have some fantasy paperbacks. These are very mixed in terms of which ones I've read and which I haven't. There are a lot of books on here that I do actually want to reread, such as The Queen of the Tailing and also Lainey Taylor's Daughter of Smoke and Bone. I really love these new covers that have recently come out. I think they are so pretty. But there's not really too much to say about these books in particular because a lot of them I still need to read. Daughters of Izdahar actually is one that I read recently and really enjoyed so that is one recommendation from the shelves. And then on the bottom here we do have to have this really horrible angle but this is just a lot of epic fantasy books. Now one thing that you will mention a lot and that you can probably see, yeah you can, so you can see that back here I do actually have some that are hidden away. This back here is the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Now I don't necessarily hide books away because I don't like them. I really like the Lord of the Rings but they're back there because I've already read them. One thing about my bookcases at this point in time is that I can't expand them any more than I already have. I can't add any more bookcases to my flat at all. So in my most recent rearrange, I have really focused in on optimizing the space that I already have and just making as much space as possible for books that I know I've got upcoming this year because I know that I have a fair few things that I'm expecting. So that is why some of them are just kind of like hidden away in the back. And that does mean that the majority of these ones, I actually haven't read yet. I have read The Name of the Wind, but I would definitely need to reread it now. But I'm waiting until we have some kind of news on the third book because he has taken his sweet time. And the same goes for Game of Thrones. I have read that entire series, but again, I would need to reread them by the time Winds of Winter comes out. But otherwise, I don't think there are any other books on here that I have read. Well, I've read The Unbroken. The Unbroken was really good. Highly recommend that one, but otherwise the rest of them are just waiting for me. So then going back up to the top of the second shelf, this is the shelf that's directly underneath the Samantha Shannon one. And this is the shelf where you can see the effect of what I was just saying about kind of optimising the space because we do actually have space over here. So at some point when I do again new books, they already have a home. But this shelf currently is just a lot of random hardback fantasy books that I didn't really know what to do with. So here we have a few fairy loot editions which one thing to note is that I do work for fairy loot so you will be seeing a lot of fairy loot books in this video but these are the fairy loot editions of Serpent and Dove and then this is the fairy loot edition of Juniper and Thorn but we do just generally have some stunning books on this and I kind of love the blue and black theme we've got going on here. Master of Sorrows is one of my favourite fantasy books so I absolutely needed that to be pride of place in the centre of the bookshelf. But then we have some of my newer books up here which are just absolutely stunning. So I do have Wolf Song by TJ Klune and this has a gorgeous sprayed edge that I am obsessed with. We do also have The Cloisters here which I adore this cover of so I just decided to have it facing out. This one is kind of like a dark academia fantasy book but it is just absolutely beautiful. And the same goes for God Killer which again is absolutely beautiful. I was really debating between which of these two books to have facing out but I decided to go with the cloisters just to have a bit more of a gothic theme on the shelf. So moving down a shelf this is what I meant when I just said you will be seeing a lot of fairy loot editions because this entire shelf is fairy loot books apart from one. So the one that is not fairy loot is The Goblin Emperor by Catherine Addison but this one is equally as shiny and foiled. This is the Broken Binding edition that came within their subscription that also just looked really cool so I figured it would match the shelf well. So of course the main thing you can see on the shelf is my Diviners collection. This is one of my favourite series and some of my favourite fairy loot editions. This art deco design is just absolutely beautiful. This is definitely one of my favourite fairy loot editions and I just think it looks so sleek and this nice foil detail on the hardcover itself too. It all just suits the book so well and I read the series last year, absolutely adored it so it takes pride of place on this bookcase. But all of these books really are just stunning so we've got the From Blood and Ash series, again incredibly foiled even more so on the hardcover itself. This is probably some of the most impressive foiling that I have seen. I am absolutely obsessed. These editions do also have artwork underneath the dust jacket as well, as well as sprayed edges, of course. We have the Winter Night series here, and then also the Devabad series, which, again, is one of my favourite series, and no other hardbacks exist besides the Fairly editions of the first book, so I am very glad to have those. Well, when I say they don't exist, the first book is out of print in hardback, so you can get them, but they're very hard to find. The next shelf down is my Greek mythology retelling collection. So this one again is about half and half when it comes to which ones I've read and which I haven't, because after doing a dissertation on Greek myth retellings, I just have strayed away from this kind of category for a while, but 
there have been a lot of new releases within this theme and there are definitely a lot of books here that I am desperate to read so I really want to read Ithaca by Claire North and I also just love this cover. I think it just looks so sleek and I love the colour palette but Madeline Miller is one of my favourite authors and so I had to treat myself to this gorgeous Illumicrate box set of both Song of Achilles and Circe. Look how shiny it is. These books are just absolutely beautiful. And this color combination is amongst my favorite. I love dark green and gold. The shine is too powerful for the auto lighting, but yeah, definitely some of my favorite editions. One that I'm not going to get out, but I definitely recommend is this teeny tiny one you can see here. This is Wait by Jeanette Winterson. It's so good. It's a retelling of the Atlas myth and I absolutely adore it. So highly recommend that one too. And while we're here, I figured I would show you one of my favorite covers, which is this one. This is actually the US cover that I specifically bought off Book Depository because I preferred this cover much more than the UK edition. But this is Daughters of Sparta by Claire Haywood. So I haven't read this one yet, but I just wanted to show the cover. <laughs> Moving down the shelf, this is all paperback fantasy besides the two hardbacks over there. I actually haven't read the majority of books from the shelf. One that I have read is A Discovery of Witches. I definitely do need to continue that series before I forget what happened in this one. And I have also read Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, which to be fair is quite the accomplishment because this is over a thousand pages long. I absolutely adore this cover. This is a kind of redesign cover that Bloomsbury did, but I ended up really enjoying this one. But I definitely do need to delve into more of these books because a lot of them seem to have a fairy tale-esque vibe. So we've got Winter Song, which is all goblin related. We have For the Wolf, which is some kind of fairy tale. I can't remember right now. Uprooted, I have read. We do have some Tea Kingfisher over here, which I absolutely adore the ones that I've read. One of my favorite ones is The Raven and the Reindeer. This is just such a magical retelling of the Snow Queen super short and just a lot of fun. So I highly recommend that one. I know that T. Kingfisher has a lot of other books that are much more popular within the social media realm. So I'm here to recommend you this one. Moving down another shelf, we reach my YA fantasy books that aren't fairy loot editions. <laughs> I don't typically buy YA fantasy books anymore. So a lot of these are ones that I have read and I'm just kind of keeping hold of or ones that I and keeping hold of because I do genuinely think that they sound interesting. That I'm kind of saving for a day where I just feel like delving back into YA fantasy. But typically when it comes to YA fantasy, if I feel like reading it, I'm gonna read a Fairy Loot edition because I will have them all. So there's not really too much for me to say about this shelf in particular besides The Raven Boys is one of my ride or die series. I absolutely love it. So I had to have that one facing out. These will eventually be replaced by the Fairy Loot editions because we have some stunning ones coming out. So these will lovingly go into storage when that is the case and be replaced by beautiful special editions but otherwise from the shelf another one that I loved was Wicked Fox by Kat Cho. I still need to read the sequel of this one and I do also really love The Ren Hun. This is one which I recommend at any given opportunity. This is another one that has kind of Celtic mythology vibes. I just absolutely adore it. So then moving to the bottom shelf this is a little bit of a wild card shelf because this is all manga and as you can see it is very full. I don't know what to do if I gain any more manga because this, in fact I know some of it is in the living room so it's not even all shelved here but this is the majority of my manga books and um, it is very very full. These books up here really take some tugging to get out <laughs> so I am just gonna leave them as is but the majority of these books, all of these ones are Junji Ito. I love Junji Ito. He is the king of horror. Definitely gory horror. Not for the faint hearted, but I just love how weird and wonderful they are. And one thing that you might notice about this kind of manga collection is that I tend to get bind up editions of manga because these little teeny tiny ones, they're nice and everything, but I just get through them far too quickly. So if I can get a bind up edition, I will get a bind up edition. So you can kind of see that here with the bind up editions of Orange, which I actually haven't read yet, but I do have both of them. I also have these bind up deluxe editions of The Girl From The Other Side, which are absolutely beautiful. I am obsessed with this. I just think these are so classy and sleek looking. Easily some of my favorite books on this entire shelf. I then also have the black edition of Death Note. I had the first two collector's editions of Fruits Baskets, which I haven't read yet. And then one of my favourite mangas, which I have been raving about recently, is The Ancient Magus Bride. This I very quickly became obsessed with and I'm desperately looking for volume two because I need the story in my life. <laughs> 
And then these ones over here are all I Hear the Sun Spot, which I've read three out of five, so I'm on a good roll with those ones. I am rapidly losing light, so apologies for how harsh this looks right now. But to go over to the skinnier bookshelf that I have, this, I'm only gonna mention briefly because this is my Brandon Sanderson collection. I do have quite the random selection, but these I just wanted to point out because again, these are fairly editions and they have gilded edges. You can get this kind of hardback elsewhere, but Fairy Loot is the only one who has gilded edges and I love a gilded edge. So then moving down a couple, we have my very messy fantasy romance shelves. So there's a couple of these. This one, the majority of these are a couple of my favorite series. So here we have Blood Solace by Vila Roth, which if I just very carefully move that out the way because it is prone to falling off. This is the first book and I am absolutely obsessed with this. I've raved about it so often. In my videos, I think the most recent one that I can remember off the top of my head would be the best books of 2022. So I will leave a link to that down below if you want to go and check that out. And also how beautiful are these covers? Obsessed. And I do also have the Fortuna Swan series here. My first book is missing because Cody has borrowed it, but I just love how all of these book spines look together because they all have kind of like a purple pink hue to them. And again, the fantasy romance continues onto this shelf, which is a mess. <laughs> The majority of these are Emma Ham books. I love her books. But we do also have the Bargainer series here and then a lot of random books which I haven't actually yet read. There are also more books behind these ones. So if I do that, you can see. I had to tell myself to stop buying fantasy romance books because one, all of these are quite expensive because they are all self-published, I believe. Yes, they are all self-published. But I was not reading them as quick as I was buying them. So I am leaving this as an overstacked mess a game of Tetris within my shelves so that I don't buy any more thinking that I have room for them. <laughs> At least that is what I'm telling myself. And then I actually misspoke because this is also a fantasy romance shelf so I do not have just the two shelves, I have three. As you can see some of these are the Laura Olympus series. I do have some Eliza Rain bind ups, I love the series, it's so fun. This is the Hades Trials, it is a Hades and Persephone inspired romance. Love it. We do have some more Emma Ham here. This was very briefly a Greek myth inspired fantasy romance shelf, but that very soon just kind of stopped. I also think some of these aren't necessarily fantasy romance. I don't know about these two, but it is gonna be a case of me rearranging them when I actually read them because I have not yet. <laughs> Moving down a shelf, we have my very few sci-fi and dystopian books. So here we have the Fairy Loot Red Rising series, which have this kind of scythe design on the spine. And we have a fair few Jeff Vandermeer. This again is also double stacked, so we do have a few in the back, but any that are in the back I have actually already read. So the ones you can see peeking through here are the Sleeping Giant Temis File series. So I am just making sure that all of the ones that are within reach are the ones that I haven't read yet. For instance, the only ones I've read from these front ones are Red Rising and Annihilation. So the first books within the two series you can see here. And then to move to the final bottom shelf, again, we have a double stacked bookcase. This is all contemporary slash romance books and I kind of feel like I should swap these two around so that the romance continues on from the fantasy romance but whatever. Here you can see I have a fair few Colleen Hoover books which they're just fun trash. I find them so addictive. I know that they are kind of terrible but they are very addictive. The Get Alive Chloe Brown series. I've only read the first book but I absolutely loved it. This is actually one of my favourite books. The Hating Game I also really enjoyed which took me by surprise and these were definitely the books that kind of opened up my mind a bit more when it came to romance books because while I knew I liked fantasy romance just normal contemporary modern day romances weren't something that I'd read too much of before. So a lot of these books, again, I haven't actually read because I'm still kind of getting into it. One that I just recently got that I'm very intrigued about is Twisted Love. So I'm hoping to give this one a go soon. I also just wanted to mention this one, which isn't romance, but it is just a really cute contemporary short story collection that I absolutely adored. This melted my heart and then fixed it again right afterwards. It really took me by surprise. So I thought I would mention it here too. So that is it for my main bulk of bookcases. So from here on out, this video is going to be very scattered because all of my books are on various bookcases. I also need to recharge my camera battery because this has taken me so long that we have bled the battery dry. So the lighting will be very different in the next few clips, but onwards we go.
Next up in my bookcases we have the smaller one on the other side of the room which is the home to my non-fiction slash mythology and folklore collection. So to take you in a little bit closer this top shelf is all mythology and folklore collections. As you can see I have quite a lot of these. I'm not going to go through this too in depth because I do actually have a full video going through my mythology and folklore collection so I will leave a link to that down below. But there have been a few additions to it since then. Largely some Scottish ones so for instance things like this because now that I live here I come across these sorts of books quite often in small independent shops here. This is also a recent edition which I got from Sterling but I was really intrigued by this because it is very specifically dark folklore and I think it just sounds really cool. But otherwise like I said the rest of these are included in the video that I've just mentioned so go and check that out if you are interested. And then if we move down to the shelf this very clearly doesn't belong there but I also don't have room for it so it's kind of just hovering. <laughs> but this is largely non-fiction books specific to either gothic things or ancient history. So I do have quite a lot of books like this, which is Magic in Ancient Greece and Rome, both because I used this for my dissertation, which I actually have my dissertation on here, bound up in this little green book. But there are a few other things as well. So for instance, like the one that's just hovering on top, this is about the women killed by Jack the Ripper. There's also some of these absolutely gorgeous hardcover illustrated non-fiction books which are just absolutely stunning. I love things like this so I have quite a lot of them dotted around my house. <laughs> this is also quite a recent edition so this is The Darker Side of Fairy. I just was really intrigued by the cover and I love 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 dark folklore so definitely something I am interested in reading. And then to move down the shelf this one is messy because we have a stack here that is classics that I'm going to put in storage so they're just kind of there for now. But this is the rest of my non-fiction. A lot of it is history based as you can see here because that is where my interest lies but we do also have the few random ones that are not related to history so this one is a true crime one. This is one of my favourites that I've read, it's so good. But yes, quite the mismatched collection on the shelf in particular. And then finally for the books in this room I do also have this book cart which doesn't really have too much going on. Just a few random books that didn't really suit the other places too well. So on this top shelf we have graphic novels and a few like random arcs and things that I've needed out recently. This middle shelf has a few fairy loot series or books that have been a shorter format at hardback and the same goes for this bottom one too. Okay so now we've moved into my living room and this my friends is where I get particularly excited because this is my favourite bookcase along with the next one that I'm about to show you but this is the bookcase that you will see in all of my sit down videos so this is my background and this is the home to all of my dark academia, thriller, horror type stories. Anything that could be considered dark really. I do also have a shelf of really stunning horror and folklore collections which you can probably see peeking in the corner. So this bookcase does go all the way down to the floor but let's start with these top ones. So as you can see I do have a pretty big gap here that is literally just because I've recently just read Ninth House and Hellbent so they do usually live there but they're currently missing because they are on my bedside table. Otherwise these are the majority of my hardbacks. A lot of these I haven't actually read yet so this is almost like a TBR shelf. We then move down to this shelf which excuse this this is just a lamp. <laughs> I can't really move it anywhere to get out of the way but for this shelf I was really undecided on which books to have facing out because I really wanted to have If We Were Villains facing out because I love the black and copper but I also really love the cover of Slewfoot so I just decided to go with both. <laughs> As you can see this one is a bit more decorative. We do have a skull, a candle of like a statue, there's a crystal over there, pumpkin. There's a lot going on. There are some cult classic kind of dark academia books over there including Bunny and the secret history which you can just about see. This one is one of my favourite colour combinations so I decided to have this one facing out. It does also have black sprayed edges and this little bird end paper going on inside and it is also signed which is pretty cool. I also love that the actual hardback of this is like a burnt orange colour as well. I just I love this colour scheme. That colour scheme as well is definitely one that I tried to tie together a little bit on the shelf so that's why I've got Bunny closest to If We Were Villains and also I've got this like pumpkin here so we've got a little colour theme going on slightly. <laughs> then going down a shelf we get to the shelf which you guys will see in the majority of my sit down videos and I think you can tell because 
I put all of my prettiest books here. <laughs> so all of these are classics that have some kind of special feature to them. So all of these ones, for instance, are a kind of leather look, really beautifully foiled, gilded edition. So one of my favourites from the shelf, if I just move this little piece of artwork out of the way, which I absolutely love. This is one of my favourite things, so I just love to have it propped up near the King Arthur book specifically. But this, for instance, is the King Arthur book, which is just absolutely beautiful all the way around. And these are truly books that I just treasure. I adore them. We have the Treasury of Irish Folklore here, which again is gilded. And then to show you one that is a little bit different, we have Edgar Allan Poe with silver gilded edges. I absolutely adore these. For the shelf as well, I do typically have melted candle decorations, but I do have a couple of folio books in this corner. One of them being the Grimm's Fairy Tales that's inside this slipcase. Now I specifically bought this for myself as a little birthday gift or a Christmas gift of some kind because it's illustrated by Arthur Rackham, who is probably my favourite artist. He just does the most quaint, whimsical artwork that I absolutely adore. And this has so many beautiful illustrations that just match the vibe perfectly. It really is just something to behold and is one of my most treasured books. Alongside that, I do also have this folio edition, which you can't really see too well here, but it is a red slipcase foiled in gold that was also upside down, but there you go. <laughs> And then the book in here is called How to See Fairies and it's just, again, absolutely beautiful. Every single page is just full of these really whimsical fairy illustrations. I absolutely adore and again, this is one of my most treasured books. I mean, look at that. Look at that. You could frame every page of this book. So yes, those are definitely two of my most treasured books of my entire collection. And then just another edition that I want to point out is these little tiny ones, which are the Chilton Classics. There are quite a few of these ones, but I do already own a lot of the books that are featured within this collection. But the couple that I do have include Dracula and The Picture of Dorian Gray, which is my favourite one. Again, this has gilded edges and is just absolutely beautiful. So I do have that one faced out on display because I just think it's beautiful. Okay, so it's not very easy to get a good angle on anything from this point onwards, but this for the most part is paperbacks of horrors, dark academia, thrillers, anything like that. I do have a few hardbacks in this corner, and these are actually, if I move you around just a little bit, these do have multiple stacked behind the one book. Again, just to kind of save on space a little bit, but for the most part, these are just lots of paperbacks. <laughs> Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke is one that I absolutely adored. It's very, very strange, very gruesome, so heads up if you are going to give it a go, but this is definitely one that I would recommend. But otherwise, a lot of the books on this shelf in particular are ones that I haven't read yet, because I always tell myself I'm saving them for like Halloween season, spooky season reads, but I need to just actually read them because they have stacked up. <laughs> And then to take it down just a little bit more, you can't really see much here because of this kind of like blanket basket I've got going on, but these are just some classic horror books or gothic horror books that I've got down in the bottom corner. So then we take it to the opposite side of the room and we have my fairy loot shelves. Now, of course, I have been pointing out various fairy loot editions all the way through this video, but this is where the majority of the monthly books live and also a few series that are completed. So if I take you first to this top shelf, here, as you can see, I do have this decoration of Athena. We've got a little fairy here because it's a fairy loot shelf. We also have gross and honey candles dotted around. And as for the books, these are the Graceling series and the Kingdom of the Wicked series. I really enjoyed Graceling when I read it. I was really pleasantly surprised by it. So I am very glad to have this series. Kingdom of the Wicked, I haven't read yet, but these are some of our most popular like editions because look at that. <laughs> I think it's clear to see why. And also, we once again have foiling on the hardcover and artwork underneath the dust jacket. So these truly are beautiful editions and I can see why everybody is obsessed. We then have this shelf, which started out as a collection of all of the 2022 adult book only subscription books. So that is 
entirely what is on this stack of books here. But it has also extended a bit because the Atlas Six was the very first Fairy Lou adult book that we did. So this is what that looks like, but we have since had its sequel come out of the Atlas Paradox, so I basically needed to make room for the sequel. And then, even though these are YA books, I decided to put my Inheritance game set here because I absolutely love this colour palette right here. <laughs> so I haven't actually read the Inheritance games, but these are some of my favourite Fairy Loot editions that we've done yet because the colours are just absolutely beautiful. We have these three together and I just think the earthy toned books with gold foiling are the absolute best. I adore these so much. They have three different designs on the edges and we have some beautiful artwork inside too as well as foiling on the actual hardcover. So these are just absolutely beautiful. I am obsessed. So they are taking pride of place on display right there. There are quite a few of my favourite books on the shelf because we also have Babel and Emily Wells' Encyclopedia of Fairies and A Dowry of Blood. All of those I rated five stars. I love this shelf. Now the next shelf down is one that I know will actually change pretty soon, quote unquote, because this will be the Fairy Loot subscription box books of 2023. However, because we are currently only in February, we've only received the January books so far, they're just not, they're not big enough to fill the entire shelf. So for now, we do have the January YA book here, which is Spice Road, and this is absolutely beautiful. Once again, so we've got these digital spread edges and also are you ready for this look at this guy look at both of them <laughs> but are you ready are you ready i don't think you're ready look at that is that not one of the most stunning books you have ever seen this goes all the way around and again we've got artwork with this kind of reverse dust jacket underneath as well this book is truly stepping up the game so we've currently got that on display, but we do also have Vespertine and the An Ember in the Ashes series here. All of these I do plan on moving as soon as we have more of the 2023 books. So I will end up putting both adult and YA on the shelf until there's too many of them, basically. But I can probably get all of them up until like June, July on the shelf. And then once I start getting too many, I'll either start stacking them or I'll just end up rearranging everything. So this is kind of like a temporary shelf. We do have a lot of decorations. This is a really beautiful Greek mythology inspired plate that I've got. So this is largely just filling up space until I end up with more books and accounting for all of the fairy loot ones that are coming. So then this one is all of the 2022 YA books. I believe there is one missing from this, but besides that one, these are all in order. And the only difference we've got is that Daughter of the Moon Goddess now has its sequel out too. So I've popped that on at this shelf as well. These are, again, absolutely beautiful editions. These are some fan favourites of ours and again the edges of this really just stepped up the game so definitely a couple that I am glad to own. Another favourite of mine from the shelf is One Dark Window. I absolutely love this book. This is kind of like a YA crossover into adult. I ended up absolutely adoring it and again this colour scheme of dark green and gold is one that I just fall for every single time so another one that I am obsessed with. And then over in this corner, you can't really see it too well, but if I just grab this out, this is one of the items that came in a recent Fairy Loot box. It's kind of like a secret book situation. So this does actually open up into a little storage compartment and I've currently got some tarot cards and bookmarks in there. So that is something that I really love and it's helping me just fill in that little bit of space at the end. And then to move down to the final shelf, this is a lot of pink books pink and purple and also blue <laughs> we do have some fan favorites here such as once upon a broken heart these violent delights which i still need to read any chloe gong but a lot of these books are from 2021 some of the older ones or ones that i have only recently complete or otherwise some series that i do want to prioritize completing so i still need to read the ballad of never after and like I said, I do want to make my way through Chloe Gong's books and also the same goes for Elizabeth Lim. So a few little random ones down here. And then finally, just to end this video, we do have this little collection of books on my coffee table. The chaos that is my coffee table because these are all the books that are on my February TBR or at least an upcoming TBR. Some of them will likely go over into March. But as I pointed out earlier, The Blade itself and The Shadow of the Gods was missing from my main bookcase. So this is where they are. We also have a few different arcs that I'm wanting to read, quite a lot of different arcs actually. I'm really excited to read one for my enemy by Olivia Blake. 
and then a couple of romance books that I want to read soon as well. So I always have a little bundle of books on my coffee table just so that I can see them every single day and know which ones I am prioritizing next. So that my friends is it for my bookshelf tour. That is almost 1000 books just crammed into this flat in any which way they will fit. It probably didn't seem like it because I do have quite a few books in storage underneath my bed as well. Those are basically books that are nostalgia reads, so things like The Hunger Games, the Percy Jackson series, or any duplicates that I can't get rid of for whatever reason. For instance, if something is signed specifically to me and holds a memory to it, I will have kept it but just put it in storage if I didn't want it on my shelf anymore for whatever reason. So there's definitely a lot going on but I hope you enjoyed having a snoop through the bookshelves. If you've made it this far into the video then leave the stack of books emoji down below. And I would love to know how you arrange your bookshelves because I used to be the sort of person who would just put them on however they would fit. Now I do like grouping them into genres so that I at least have some kind of running theme but otherwise I still do just kind of fit them however looks best. I would love to do an alphabetized version but I think I would need a much bigger library <laughs> if that was the case. But I love organization so tell me all about it down below and if you have any questions about specific things you've seen or I don't know how I arrange certain things then just leave them down in the comments and I'll be here to chat. But for now I'm gonna love you and leave you and let you get on with the rest of your day so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did then meant to leave a like and a comment so let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already then please consider doing so. Down in the description box you'll find information to all the books. No you won't. I am not linking one thousand books in the description box <laughs> but you will find links to my social media and other bookish stuff as well so be sure to check that out if you haven't already but for now i hope you have a lovely day and i'll see you next time with a new video bye